Friends, welcome to another episode of Making Disciples. And today's episode is a interview with a new friend, Majtava. Uh, he is originally from Iran. He's a Muslim convert to Christianity and he's going to share a bit of his story uh, with us in this episode. Uh, but his faith took him on a journey uh, so that he was imprisoned twice, once for 21 days and once for three years. And for three years he was in prison for sharing his faith with people. He then becomes a refugee, ends up in Turkey for a period of time and now lives in the UK. But he's amazing. His story of his commitment to Jesus in the face of suffering. This is real persecution. I think what many of us experience in terms of persecution is actually just mild intolerance. Like we people just are frustrated with us. And most of the time, I think when we uh, say I'm being persecuted, it's often because uh, Christians are being uh, obnoxious and rude and they're being called out for it and they call it persecution. I think what we experience in the West it's not real persecution. Like what he experiences in Iran is real persecution. So I'd love you to hear his story. And then I'd love you to spend some time after this episode just praying for what God is doing in Iran. It really is exciting. So that's enough from me. My name is Chris Rogers. I'm your host on this episode of Making Disciples. Please subscribe. Please share. Please leave a comment. What would you have liked to have asked him in today's episode if you could? And if we get enough comments... We'll get him back to answer uh, your questions. So, friends, here we go. An interview uh, with my new brother from another mother from Iran. Most of all, welcome to Making Disciples. I'm so pleased to have you with me. Uh, thank you for taking time to share your story with us this afternoon. It's, it's my pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. You have got a fantastic story and the cost of discipleship, the cost of following Jesus yeah. has really cost you. And I'd love you to share a little bit about how you came to faith and what following Jesus has meant for you in the impact it's made on your life. Yes. So um, I'm, I'm Mojtaba. I'm from Iran, uh, a city uh, from a city called Shiraz. Uh, which is a southern city. Uh, I was 18 when I came to Christ. Uh, before I uh, give my heart to Jesus and surrender my life to him, I had uh, big issues in my life, family issues, person, uh, some uh, personal issues. Uh, basically, my dad uh, went bankrupt when I was a teenager, like 12 years old, and my brother went through a deep uh, depression and he, he became uh, violent in the house and uh, we used to have a lot of fights. He, he, he's uh, older than me, six years older than me, and uh, he used to beat me a lot and uh, I was suffering from, from that, that situation in my house. And it was really difficult for me to cope with that situation as a teenager. Uh, financially, it was a difficult situation. And also, uh, this, uh, the, my relationship with my brother. After a while, I became full of anger and bitterness uh, towards my brother and made me really, really negative in my life. I, I couldn't trust anyone. And I, and I just uh, wanted to spend most of my time out of the house mm. and just spend my time with my uh, group of friends. And I, because I was really negative, I chose uh, negative friends and doing lots of negative activities. And uh, just, just an example, I was wishing my brother going out of the house and he never come back. By any reason, he something happened to him and he died. And now, when I look look at back and see my heart condition, how dark it was, mm -hmm. it, it, it is very sad. And I'm uh, after a while, after a while, uh, uh, just before, like it was a few months before my 18th uh, birthday, uh, I was feeling really, really empty and hopeless 
And I was just keep asking myself, what is the purpose of this life? Who am I? Why I'm on this earth and where I'm going when I die? And according to the uh, Islam religion, which is the religion of the country, and it couldn't help me at all. Um, uh, also, it, it put lots of burden on me. Why? Because there are lots of rituals and rules you have to do all the time. And if you don't, uh, if you're not perfect and not doing all, all of them, you 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 feel uh, you find yourself guilty before this God. So I I I I, I was feeling a great distance between myself and God. And I was always telling myself, I'm going to hell. I know I'm the bad guy. I look at my life as star. And, um, and so thinking about God himself and religion, it was hurting me, irritating me, you know, and just, just uh, also uh, killing my hope. Uh, and, and, uh, so I was feeling really lost, desperate. Uh, one, I remember one night, I before I go to bed, for the first time in my life, very in an honest way and friendly way, uh, in a humble heart, I prayed to God, and I said, uh, "God, I don't know who you are or what you are." I just assume you are the creator of heaven and earth. Mm. I don't care about religions. I don't care about holy people. About I don't care about your imams, prophets. I'm just absolutely broken. And if you are there, please save me. Mm. And after a few days, I found my brother absolutely changed. He used to uh, take some drugs and he started to go into some uh, uh, like meetings to get rid of drugs, narcotics anonymous, they call it an A. And he, someone was Christian there and shared the gospel with him and uh, gave him some video disc about Christianity. And he prayed with that guy and he was completely changed my brother who was uh, always angry being violent and having this depression for a few days i found him absolutely changed he was he was really calm and kind talking to me nicely and i couldn't believe that what what has happened to him it was really sweet experience to find him like this after a long long time and so I, I, I became really curious about that. And, and I felt it that now I, I know that, that it was Holy Spirit sort of pushing me to, towards this subject because nat naturally I was absolutely negative and dark and I didn't like the God subject uh, at all and religion subject at all. And, uh, but uh, one day I asked him to show me one of, those videos about Christianity and he played uh, this a video that two pastors was talking about Jesus and the, the two pastors started uh, like what Jesus has done for us on the cross and uh, all about gospel the good news and the salvation and uh, that Jesus can uh, provide for us and he can release us from the chains we have and I, I, I feel and, and especially the, the hope of future and whatever they said, I said, it's absolute for me. I need this. And, and also, I, I had a great peace in my heart as they were talking. And I felt I'm like a lost uh, child. I'm coming back home. It was a strange, but at the same time, very familiar to me. And, but anyway, at the end of the video, the uh, pastor made an invitation that if you want to uh, accept this, you can pray with me and and i remember i just whispered the prayer with the pastor and i after the prayer i experienced the most sweetest uh, event in my life immediately after the prayer i felt a 
great sense of peace and rest in my heart. Mm. And I, I could feel it that it was like a great burden, heavy burden has taken away from my shoulders. And even physically, it touched me. I, my, my body was really lethargic. I could, I could hardly move. And anyway, that day as habit, I walked out my house going to my friends, just like every day we seen each other doing nothing, just spent our time together. And uh, uh, I was walking and I look at the sky, the blue sky, I say, wow, it's beautiful. What a sky. Look at the trees, the green color, giving thanks to God for that. And, it, and I, basically after a while, uh, I found myself completely changed all the bad habits. My mouth was really dirty. I mean, I was swearing a lot because of the bitterness in my heart, but God, healed my heart he he healed my relationship with my brother the um, the our house situation completely changed from a trouble all the troubles just uh, went and the peace came to our heart uh, to our house my my dad gave his heart to jesus my sister one of my sisters gave her heart to jesus so a, a radical change happened in our life just by the power of the prayer to Jesus and accept him. And after that, I was every day, I was grateful for what uh, God has uh, had done in our life. And so I started to read Bible every day and uh, I left my uh, group of my friends after two weeks. I couldn't smoke anymore. I couldn't do all the uh, bad things. Uh, habits especially uh, pornography was the biggest one that god released me from this prison literally and uh, after 15 it was 15 years ago and i i, I decided to just uh, find some christians and just grow myself to find myself more in this truth uh, that the new identity that jesus uh, gave me so you've come to faith and then it's not long before you find yourself in prison. Yeah. And then a few years later, you find you're in prison again for three years. Yeah. Uh, surely you've come to faith. Surely people filled with faith shouldn't be going to prison. What did you do to get yourself in prison? Yeah. So um, uh, some people might know that uh, after the Islamic revolution, uh, Christians, uh, uh, they haven't been free for practice their faith. There is no enough rights for them. So they can't practice their faith. They, uh, the government shut down all the churches, building the buildings, and uh, Christians have been forced to gather in, in their houses mm. secretly. And uh, because of that, uh, they are in danger of being arrested, Mm. And uh, um, I mean, it's illegal to uh, to have these activities. So I found some uh, a group of Christians. We started to uh, gather together, and after one year that we had our fellowship, like just it was like ten of us just gathering to share our faith and have the fellowship and worship our God together. And one day when I was in my house the intelligence agent came to my house and they uh, arrested, they actually at first they searched uh, my house, they collected everything about Christianity yeah. and also some of my personal stuff and they uh, put handcuffs and blindfold on my face and they took me and my brother and my dad and my sister to, uh, to, the, uh, to, to the intelligence service jail and they put me in solitary confinement for 22 days uh, uh, at that time when I was 20 and they interrogated me about all our activities, people who coming to, uh, to the, this house group and all this stuff. Yeah. And then you end up again for a three year period in prison for yeah. teaching the Bible. Yeah. And so there's a real cost for you. Jesus has cost you. Yeah. And the implication of that uh, has to be huge for you. Uh, 
why did you stick with Jesus if he was going to cost you your freedom? Yeah. Um, you know, in the, the second time when I was in prison, which was really, really harder, and like being far away my family, being constantly being in danger among the criminal people, my future wasn't clear at all, a confusion about my uh, future. And I mean, the pain, it, the pain of prison itself, uh, it's, it's just beyond our imagination. I mean, it's, it was a unique experience. I, I never could. I mean, it's, an, it's like another world. Yeah. When you go in, the, the, the world in prison is another world. And I, I suffered a lot during that time, uh, which I can't explain all of it now. But in the midst of that, one day I was praying and still I remember this prayer and I share it with people and um, because it's, it talk about my life, why I, 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 I accepted all this situation. I prayed one day, I remember I was thinking about my life and I was looking at past and, and praying like this that I said, Jesus, the pain and suffering I have today in prison is not at all comparable with the pain and suffering being without you. Mm. I prefer to be in this pain, but not, not that pain. This pain is, is healing me. This pain is leading me to your embrace, which is eternal life. But that pain was leading me to the absolute darkness yeah which was uh, which is hell actually i mean the being meaningless being hopeless and desperate feeling lost and no hope no hope and uh, i mean the, the 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 situation i was struggling with no one could change my brother except uh, from jesus you know no one could do that and the changes that it happened to me it was like a uh, yeah, it was, it's a, it's a bit miracle and it, it, it is my testimony and it, not only my testimony, the testimony of thousands of people in Iran who uh, uh, encountered Jesus himself and they child, their life completely changed. And these people, they, uh, people, ordinary people from, uh, from a society uh, of people who are absolutely oppressed and uh, they constantly suffer from the, 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 the corruption in government and the all uh, like the terrible economy situation and people struggling with lots of mental issues uh, and family issues. But there is a, there is a man who used to walk in Jerusalem mysteries 2000 ago and he is still alive and walking in Iran's streets and find people like Mojtaba who are desperate and there is no hope for them in their religion from their government or from their traditions from anything and this man is just walking house by house and find the lost people and people who are in need and just heal them. I mean, when I look at my life, how everything changed, mm. just with one prayer. Like Jesus said, you can, you can feel the wind, but you can't tell where it comes from and where it goes. It, it, it will blow where, wherever it wants, you know? You, you can't understand it. And, it. and he said the people who, who, who uh, uh, they have new birth by the Holy Spirit. They like this, and I felt this new birth strongly. Yeah. I didn't understand from where it came, but I just felt it, and I can see it in, uh, in my family's, uh, my friends' lives, and uh, and many, 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 many lives that we hear uh, from yeah. Iran. So the thing is, when you if you believe in Jesus as a historical figure, 
you are never going to allow your life to be taken for that historical figure. But where you encounter Jesus, the flesh and blood Jesus, you know his presence, you know him in your life. You can't walk away from that. And I love the way you said it. It's, it's just too sweet a thing to let go of. Yeah. Uh, I love that. Your story is so wonderful. And there's so much trauma in there. Yeah. There's such a such, uh, presence of God's grace mercy and love just tell us what is jesus doing right now in iran uh what kind of things are people experiencing jesus doing in their lives yeah so i hear from many people they encounter jesus in their dreams you know and uh and also church state although the church is under a huge pressure and they're not free and they're so limited but still they shine uh, into the darkness by the love and grace that uh, they show to people i give an example that in the uh, like the quarantine situation in the pandemic in iran they the christians uh, try to like make food food packs for people and uh, like making masks and even with prayers for people because it some it made some people humble to just give prayer requests because uh, they just want to try to find a way to uh, to to survive. So uh, through uh, through church. Uh, also, God showed His 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 um, power and His salvation to people, and uh, it, it is interesting when we see that no one can stop God's grace. And I mean, Jesus. If I want to say Jesus is alive and He's doing great things among Iranians, but still there are lots of issues that church from outside of church and he also inside. There, there are lots of challenge challenges they experience you know they constantly are in danger of going to prison and uh, being separated from their family or uh, uh, sort of uh, fleeing from their country like me i fled from my country and the refugee uh, i became a refugee in turkey for three years and uh, also this one it was it was a big change in my life and immigration for me wasn't easy you know leaving all my memories or my country my mom my mom is and 12 of my sisters are in iran uh, uh, now and uh, it's just so difficult but uh, yeah people people taste a real thing it's not it's not just a face you know what i mean it's it's, it's a real thing and and maybe maybe it's message for 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 the west that uh, re maybe religion is useless you know but jesus is alive jesus is is active and working yeah. god is alive maybe we are surrounded by lots of uh, beautiful it, it looks very intelligent ideas about this world and about everything but Jesus is changing people in some countries like Iran that is absolutely uh, oppressed by authorities. We're going to run out of time in a moment. Tell us, um, uh, is there one thing you would love us to know about? And what can we be praying about? Yeah. So, I mean, um, our brothers and sisters in Iran who are in this situation, and they're not free to practice their faith. Um, uh, uh, maybe we we can think about them more and listen to them more and see what we can do for them and use any platform and just bring this awareness mm. that government should stop this behavior towards christians they not deserve to be treated like like this why someone like me should have handcuffs and blindfolded 
and go to prison. Why? Just I believe in Jesus and I worship God. And actually, I, I from a bad person, I became a good person. <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, yeah, so maybe uh, not only not only about their freedom, also uh, they have lots of lessons in persecution because uh, yeah. because the view that they have on on some scriptures and uh, maybe they can help and um, and encourage us in our faith and also yeah pray for them pray for them for any support financial support uh, uh, also uh, spiritual support you know as they're going through lots of challenges god strengthen them and uh, help them more and um, yeah, to go forward for his kingdom. My friend, thank you so much for sharing your story, some of what's happening in Iran. I think if anybody wants to know more, uh, particularly around what they can do, you know, Open Doors is yeah. uh, Google Open Doors. Go to their website. Uh, it doesn't matter what country you are in, you'll find a website for them. Yeah. Uh, I absolutely adore the work of Open Doors and mm. have really appreciated spending time yeah. Uh, with all of the team and what, what they're doing. So uh, please, if you're uh, watching this, listening to this today, and you want to know more about what you can do, how you can pray, how you can respond, then please just go to the Open Doors website. Uh, mm -hmm. They'll give you things for prayer. As far as what we've heard uh, just now, they'll give you um, uh, information, up-to-date information as well. Uh, so please do just check out uh, the Open Doors website thank you so much for your time i think I, what i really appreciate about your story is you you are so lovely oh, thank and you, you are so gentle and what you have been through because of your faith for many would have hardened them mm. become bitter frustrated angry actually uh the way you speak about jesus is so beautiful it inspires me and uh, I hope and pray that those that you know watch this and sharing this with me will be inspired to turn up the temperature a little mm. bit on their faith. Take Jesus just a little bit more seriously yeah. uh, to allow him to really control the trajectory and the shape of their lives. Sometimes we're a bit too lukewarm and actually we, we need to turn it up a bit. Uh, yeah. Jesus is real. And he changes yeah, lives. Yeah. And he's alive. Yes. Amen. Mate, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate you giving thank it you. to me. That was absolutely my pleasure. Grace and peace. Thank you.